This is problem F5-2 of Hivler's Statics Textbook 14th edition. In this problem, we are looking at the equilibrium of a rigid body. We're given a static system, that is a system in equilibrium, where you have a 4 kN force acting on a rigid body at point B. This body is connected to another rigid body, a bar that goes from point C to point D. Points A and D are hinges, which means that they provide no moment reactions. We have a 4 kN force, which should be causing some sort of reactive force at bar CD. Bar CD can be called a two-force member, that is, it will have forces at point C and at point D. At the moment, we really don't know what those forces are, but we have a couple of clues. Because hinges provide reactions in the x and y directions, the reaction force should be in the x and y at point D. However, because the bar is a two-force member, that is a rigid body, it can only act in tension or compression. That means that whatever force the hinges provide to this bar should be equal to the force experienced at point C. Now, for this problem, we would like to solve for the reactions at A, and we would also like to know the force at point at bar CD. We'd like to know if it's a tensile or a compressive force. Now, just from looking at this image and knowing that this system is in equilibrium, it seems that the force on bar CD should be a compressive force. But let's also try to figure that out mathematically. When we have a system of bodies, typically we would want to create or draw a free body diagram about one of the bodies. In this case, it seems that the top bar experiences all of the forces in the system. It experiences reaction forces at hinge A, it experiences the 4 kN force, and also the force from the two force member CD. That means that all of our forces of interest will be at the top bar. So I will draw my free body diagram about bar AB. Now before I start drawing my diagram, I do want to note some relationships I can quickly note on bar CD. We notice that bar CD is a diagonal bar that has a horizontal distance of 1.5 meters, but also a vertical distance of 1.5 meters. Now this should give you some clues as to what type of triangle this is. When you have a right triangle where two of the sides have equal magnitudes, that means the triangle is a 45 degree right triangle. The 45 degree right triangle has slopes of 1 to 1 to root 2. That means that we can take the slope of this triangle to be 1 to 1 to root 2. That means that whatever magnitude we get for the force in the x or y components, the magnitude of the force of the total force, that is the diagonal force, should be equal to the force in the x component times root 2. Let's see what else this tells us. We know that the slope of the force should be 1 to 1 to root 2. That means that the x component of this force should be equal to the total magnitude force dc multiplied by the cosine of the angle. The cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. The adjacent here is 1, the hypotenuse here is root 2. This should be equal to my x component. Now, for the y component, we have the magnitude of the force times the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is also 1 over root 2. Now, what does this, this tell us? Both the x and the y components will have equal magnitudes. This means that for the purposes of this problem, the x component of force dc should be equal to the y component of force dc. This will be true for any two force members that are at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to store this and remind myself for later. Now let's draw our free body diagram.
At A, we have a hinge, and hinges provide reaction forces in the x and y directions. At point C, we have a force from the two force member, that is, force DC. However, let's split it up into its x and y components. Now that we have our free body diagram drawn, we can apply our equations of equilibrium to solve this problem. Let's recall that the equations of equilibrium tell us that the sum of forces in the x direction should be equal to zero. The sum of forces in the y direction should be equal to zero. The sum of forces in the z direction should also be equal to zero, but we're not going to count the z direction in this problem. There is one more equation of equilibrium that we need to note. We know that the sum of moments about any point should also be equal to zero in order for the system to be in equilibrium. Now these are the three equations that we will focus on for this problem. If we look at our bar, and we were to try to find the sum of forces in the x direction, we would have ax plus my unknown force dc in the x direction equals zero. That gives us two unknowns. So we can't really use that equation to solve this system, at least not now. If we were to look at the sum of forces in the y direction, we would have that AY plus my force DC in the Y direction minus 4 equals 0. That also leaves us with two unknowns, in fact different unknowns, so we can't really use the equation to solve it. We know that there's a relationship between the X and the Y components of my force DC. So we can really simplify this problem into one problem with three unknowns. But if we only focus on two equations, we still cannot solve this problem. That means that we need to turn to our sum of moments about a point. This will leave us with three equations of equilibrium and three unknowns, which will make our problem easier to solve. When we are taking the sum of moments, we typically want to find a point that will help us cancel out as many forces as possible. In this case, I'm going to select A as my point. If I want to find the sum of moments about point A, then AY and AX will automatically be cancelled because the distance from the forces to point A is zero, which means that they will provide no moments and we don't need to consider them. Similarly, the X component of force DC also acts along the A point, which means that the distance from the point to the line of action will also be zero, so we don't really have to consider that force. This leaves us an equation for sum of moments with only one unknown, the Y component of force DC. We know that this y component of force DC acts at a distance of 1.5 meters from point A. This force will result in a counterclockwise moment, so we will leave it as a positive number. The 4 kN force acting at point B at a distance of 3 meters from point A provides a clockwise moment, which means that we will give it a negative value. The sum of these moments should be equal to zero according to the equations of equilibrium. Notice that we have one equation with only one unknown. So let's solve for that unknown. Our force DC in the y direction should be equal to 4 kilonewtons times 3 meters divided by 1 and a half meters. Notice that the meters will cancel out, leaving our force in kilonewtons. This gives us a force DC in the y direction of 8 kilonewtons. But let's also remember that force DC in the y direction is also equal to force DC in the x direction. So we actually found two unknowns in this equation. Now we only have two unknowns left, AX and AY. And we have two equations left, sum of forces in the x direction and sum of forces in the y direction. This means that we can now find the remaining unknowns.
In the x direction, we have that ax plus 8 kilonewtons equals 0. Solving for ax gives us a value of negative 8 kilonewtons. Now what does this negative sign mean? It means that we drew the arrow direction for the x reaction in the wrong direction. We can say that ax is equal to negative 8 kilonewtons and keep this arrow, or we can change the direction of this arrow and just write the magnitude as 8 kilonewtons. I'll leave that up to you. In the y direction, we have ay plus 8 kilonewtons from my force DC minus 4 kilonewtons acting on B. That should be equal to 0. Solving for ay gives us a value of negative 4 kilonewtons. Again, this negative sign means that we drew the arrow in the wrong direction. You can change the direction of the arrow and express the magnitude, or leave the direction of the arrow as is and express the magnitude as a negative number. For the purposes of my free body diagram, I would like to draw the arrows in the direction of the force in order to not have negative magnitudes in my diagram. So now we have all of the forces acting on our beam AB. We found the hinge reactions at A. We also wanted to find the force on member BC and note if it was a tensile or compressive force. We know that the x component of my force DC is 8 kilonewtons in the positive x direction. The y component of my force DC is 8 kilonewtons in the positive y direction. In order to find the magnitude of my force DC, I can apply Pythagorean theorem. Or I can use the relationship I have between the slopes, knowing that FDC divided by root 2 equals each of the two components. If we multiply the components by root 2, we should get our value for FDC. This gives us a value of FDC of approximately 11.3 kilonewtons. Because the force is acting into or towards the C point, at the C point, this is what we call a compressive force. Remember DC is in compression.